Building scalable open SIM grid services with Simeon. Mick Bowman is a principal engineer in Intel Labs and leads the virtual world infrastructure research project. <coughs> His team develops technologies that enable order of magnitude scalability improvements in virtual environments, opening the door to new levels of immersiveness and interaction among players. Welcome, Mick Bowman. Thanks, Dan. Um, just a sound check, everyone here, okay? All right. Um, so, several years ago, um, uh, uh, we had just recently hired John Harleman, um, and we're starting to look at um, uh, some new ways for doing authentication and identity and how to simplify access um, uh, to uh, virtual worlds. And, and in particular, the question was really, um, what does it take to be able to uh, seamlessly move back and forth from, <clears throat> sorry, from a um, a site like Facebook um, or uh, something in your Google um, to a 3D space. And one of the things that we wanted to avoid, for the most part, was um, having to be able having to relaunch viewers and relog in and all those other things. And so we started this discussion about how to do identity. Um, how do I add new different new kinds of authentication to uh, to the OpenSIM uh, process? And we realized very quickly that the uh, that the service architecture that existed in OpenSIM was going to be very very painful to work with um, for doing that kind of extensibility and research. Um, the development cycles and other things were were going to be very difficult for it. And so, John <coughs> and Jim Radford. Uh, from the Open Metaverse Foundation went off and started building um, a set of replacement services for um, the core components of OpenSIM called Simeon. And that was sort of the, the genesis of um, the ideas. So uh, let me give you just a quick overview of what Simeon is. Um, First off, it is, it's not a replacement for the simulators. Um, it's a replacement for the robust services, and that includes things like logins and access, inventory, um, uh, and a number of other things we'll go through in, in a couple of minutes here. Um, it's implemented as um, a collection of web services using standard web web technologies. And this was this was sort of based on on a number of observations. If you if you look at the way the simulator works, um, the simulator is very much um, about 3D spaces. But the set of core services on the back end um, are really just data. Uh, it's really just transactional updates to uh, collections of information uh, that are that are data. And um, we already know how to do that. Right, the 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 people who've been architecting and building web services have been doing it for years. So um, you know, we just came at this from a uh, you know, if we have to start working on this, let's work on something um, where we already have a um, very mature, very reliable, well tested set of technologies on which we can build. Um, and so we moved from from the kind of um, not really proprietary, but but certainly kind of uh, tightly bound and constrained and closed um, robust implementations to a set of very open, um, well-maintained, well-managed, well-architected um, uh, uh, web services as the as the core plan foundation for it. Um, the third thing at Simeon is is a collection of apps and services for managing and optimizing. So we'll talk a little bit about the architecture in a minute. There's a set of, of kind of basic transactional services, and then there's a bunch of other things that are sitting on top of it. Um, two that we've added recently that, that I'll spend a little more time talking about later um, are kind of offload handlers for textures and inventory. And what that means is, is that we're moving all texture and inventory capability handling out of the simulator and onto Apache-based web services. Um, and there's a very significant performance improvement um, for the user who's retrieving the inventory in those cases, um, and also because the simulator no longer has to worry about handling those sort of kind of raw data transfers. It can focus more on the simulation, so we get better performance on the simulator as well. Um, and then the final thing, is because of the way um, we have, again, because of the way we've, we've kind of tiered the architecture here, um, it's really easy for us to actually provide um, libraries in uh, a number of different languages for 
for building and writing clients. And so um, there's a set of core services which define an API. There's a library um, in PHP for accessing that API. And all of our sort of extensible services like the hypergrid service and the login service and the texture redirection service all take advantage of that PHP library. So there is one place where we have to manage and uh, take care of the API. Similarly, we've got a set of Perl libraries um, that we use in order to write clients that allow us to do uh, everything from you know, asset manipulation and uh, garbage collection on assets to um, uh, inventory management, and you know, one of the things that we do is you know we can archive, offload all of your inventory um, using the uh, direct access to the simulator that way. Um, and finally, one thing I'll I'll say on this is that um, there is a relatively immature, but as good as anything you'll get in existing OpenSim uh, capability model, security model for uh, managing and securing the connection between the simulators, the users, and all of the clients, and the core services. So what you get um, by using Simeon over Robust, um, and, and again, the install, what you pay for is, um, is You've got another software package that has to be managed and configured. Um, the configuration isn't that difficult once it's once it's in place, and for the most part, it's been extremely stable. Um, it's been uh, more or less the same uh, configuration approach um, for the last two and a half or three years that we've been running um, on our grids for it. Um, but it is a separate package that has to be installed. But what you get out of it is. Um, uh, a set of fairly stock approaches for doing uh, performance, performance management, stability management. Um, uh, you know, we can do load balancing using any of the existing uh, Apache front end load balancers. Um, you can do hot swap and failover and other things like that in a relatively straightforward way. Um, the three tier architecture that we have does allow you to do a lot with extensibility. Um, and what we'll talk about later in the talk today is how to do performance optimization and scalability. Um, how do you tune your deployment um, for the kinds of scalability requirements that you have? And how do you, how do you get what you want uh, for your users that way? Um, and like I said, the final thing is, is that it does provide this authenticated access. and. Um, while we are still evolving the the security models and the capability models that we have for for doing security, um, what we have right now is good enough to be very flexible for expressing things like and creating things like these offload services um, for allowing users to have direct authenticated access um, uh, to their inventory if the grid owners choose to provide it. So there's an awful lot of flexibility there in that model. So. Um, let's just sort of review for a second what what we mean when we talk about um, these kind of robust services, the core services that are. So um, we're kind of all familiar with the simulator. The simulator principal role is to manage space, um, um, and it manages most of the connection to uh, to the viewer. It's out there. The simulator does that right now. Uh, by relying on a set of core services. Um, so uh, some of the central services give it some information about users, um, uh, information about presence and where the user is currently logged in, uh, provides services for doing logins and hypergrids and, and managing the transactions that go back and forth. Um, simulators, for the most part, in the way they're architected today, rely on an external asset server, although most of the connections to the asset server um, uh, are required principally to manage inventory and access to inventory. Um, there's also a set of services for managing maps um, and how you register regions and how you find regions. Um, and then there's a bunch of social services like friends and groups and other things like that that are part of it. Um, the, the robust architecture is a huge improvement over where we started from uh, Krista can give you the dates on when she and Melanie went through and did the entire connector architecture, um, but it's a huge improvement over where we were before with um, uh, a bunch of, of different invocation methods for accessing those services. Um, but even now, um, the connection between the simulator and Robust is mostly uh, forms encoder or query encoded. 
um, key value pairs that are layered over HTTP with, with XML results coming back. Um, but to call it an API would be um, something of a stretch. Um, the robust services that exist there um, are all C-sharp implementations that are compiled into um, kind of custom server code. So um, there are ways, and there you know, we've been working on plugins, robust plugins, in order to add uh, add functions to it. Um, but for the most part, you know, you're going to have to go write C sharp. You're gonna, your development model is going to require you to shut down the server, add things, um, bring them back up again. Um, and there's really no enforcement of any consistencies in the APIs. And so you have things like the login service, which has a particular viewer-specific protocol sitting side by side with uh, the asset service, which is one of these HTTP layered uh, uh, applications. Simeon um, has the same high-level boxes, right? The simulator continues to access this core set of services that's on the back end, um, and that's managed um, back through the set of uh, database services. Um, and the invocation of the services uh, in Simeon, that is the connection between the simulator and Simeon, um, uh, is fairly consistent, um, with one exception, which we've actually remo removed that exception. Um, uh, assets were being transferred in a particular way, but that's now even being embedded inside um, the, the single API call. Um, but for the most part, it's JSON RPC that's layered over the top of HTTP. There's a single set of API functions um, uh, that moves things around. Um, so, for example, extending this to do all invocations via SSL is a relatively straightforward uh, modification to the uh, to the code, and one that that um, Doug Maxwell and Moses has asked for um, uh, in order to be able to to secure the the communication between the simulator and, and Simeon. Um, one of the other advantages of that um, is that when we wanted to get authenticated access from the simulators to the Simeon services, um, uh, in order to provide us a, a greater flexibility in being able to uh, authenticate foreign simulators and then revoke their privileges to connect to a grid in the future, um, uh, we simply added a set of capabilities into the RPC layer, um, and it was more or less, once all the plumbing was taken care of, it was more or less a couple of lines of code in order to pull that out. So the advantage of having this consistent protocol and the tiering architecture that I'll talk about in a minute is it really makes kind of having a well-defined protocol much easier to implement. On the server side, um, all of the Simeon services are implemented as PHP scripts that are executed in Apache server. Um, as a development model, that has a lot of advantages. Um, it's it doesn't require us to go in and take down services and add them back up. We can modify uh, live and running systems, and we frequently do that um, in order to make things continue to work. Um, and of course, you know, we have a couple of backend plugins for the database, um, but. Uh, for the most part, I think Moses is running with a file system based um, uh, asset store um, using the uh, extensions that, that OS Grid got, but for the most part, the rest of us are using MySQL, who are actually running it. Um, there is old code for MongoDB, but I'm fairly certain it doesn't work anymore. So. Let's blow up that box then and take a look at what's inside um, the, the set of Simeon services. Um, it, it, it's very much designed with the intent of, again, taking advantage of everything we've learned over the last, uh, what, almost 20 years about how to do um, web services. Um, and, and more than that, you know, 30 years of, of how to do um, uh, robust and reliable services, and using this kind of three-tier architecture, where we have databases on the back end, and and again, you know, with with database technology, it's relatively easy to take stock systems and do things like create replicated databases with hot failovers. We we understand how to do that. That's just sort of you know, kind of standard IT management of the data layer. So we really didn't want to worry too much about that. The second layer, the second tier is that core service API, which is where really the logic comes in. That's where the, the database transactions um, are, are converted into um, uh, 
uh, call in 3D web or, or uh, 3D um, application platform transactions. And so the APIs that are exported by the core services are things like um, uh, add a node to inventory, uh, store an asset, save an asset, create a session, update the information that's associated with that, with that session. Um, and again, I'll talk about how, about how we do um, uh, access controls and some of the other things that are on that. Um, so uh, the front end, then the 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 third tier is really the the kind of presentation tier, and that's the thing that does all of the high level transactions. And so each one of those services, the simulator, the login, and the others, that are exporting a very specific um, uh, API out to things like scripts, the viewer, web browsers, and other things like that. And so um, our inventory uh, access, our inventory offload, is actually implemented. Uh, exporting the API that the viewer expects for accessing inventory, but it turns around and converts those calls into the core service API calls. Um, login similarly, and this and the simulator does that as well. Okay, so the Simian components, Simian again, based on those three tiers, is is really kind of three sets of packages. Um, the one is the the kind of core grid services that we have access to, and I'll talk about all of these in a second. Um, then there's that that kind of set of services and applications that constitutes the, the third tier uh, application. So it's grid login, which provides both grid and hypergrid services. Um, and you know we're able to, for the most part, hypergrid back and forth. We don't have the, the inventory connection, um, the inventory uh, limitations that Krista has in the uh, robust implementation yet moved over and we'll probably not we'll probably do it based on our capability model which will give us a lot more flexibility in in what actually gets exp uh, exposed that way um, the grid public services are things like the texture inventory and map offload these are uh, viewer capabilities, uh, Second Life viewer capability handlers um, that allow us to move uh, functionality out of the simulator and off into um, uh, web-based services. And so one of the things we found, for example, when we just, just the moving of textures off of um, the simulator and onto an Apache server allowed us a huge amount of uh, performance improvement in, in accessing the textures. Um, and it was relatively straightforward. There's a little bit of quirkiness to the um, uh, to the SL viewer protocols and, and what they're expecting with the, the web requests, but it's really just web requests. Inventory has been a little more challenging um, because there are um, uh, a number of expectations in the transaction which are not always effectively documented, and so that's been uh, much more of an adventure. And, and maps, again, um, we were talking earlier about some of these things that um, we've moved essentially all of the map access um, into the central service, which the viewers um, uh, can be configured uh, to access on login. Um, grid front end then is the web grid manager, and, and frankly, um, others have worked on that. Um, Jim and John did most of the implementation of that, and it really has not been touched. Um, and it really should be treated as an example for what you can do and what works out of the box as opposed to the way that you need to uh, for it. Um, and finally, the web dev access was was really um, uh, an experiment in how to do something that's completely different. And so, if, you, if you're not familiar with web dev, what it allows you to do is to essentially mount a, uh, a network file system. So you can take your inventory, mount it as a file system um, on your Windows box or your Mac box or anything that supports a web dev protocol, um, and uh, interact with it through through um, a file system interface, which you know, if you've ever gone through and tried to do you know, inventory management and other things and, and clean stuff up and archive other folders using the, the SL viewer interfaces, you know how painful that can be. Um, and some of the file system access where you can write scripts and other things on top of it makes life a whole lot easier. So um, so that's experiment. The, the web dev code is experimental and again, hasn't really been maintained much, but it was, it was an, uh, a demonstration of what we can do with this three-tier architecture to allow us to get access to things. Um, and then the final set of packages are these things, that the, the common package is a set of uh, libraries that, it, that 
export the uh, Simeon PHP interface, um, uh, and this is the it's the set of libraries that all of our kind of clients, our third tier uh, applications, are built on. Um, and then in the contrib directory, we have a bunch of uh, the 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 Perl libraries and the Perl clients that are doing that. And the Perl clients allow you to do everything from user and scene administration to inventory uh, administration as well. Um, so let's explode, explore a little bit more of, of each of those packages, um, and then we'll move on and talk a little bit about the scalability parts of it. Um, so when you when you look at the grid services, it's really three layers inside there. There's the the um, data abstraction layer at the bottom, uh, which provides us a consistent interface to um, the backend database, um, whether it's MySQL or MongoDB or file systems. Um, there's a set of um, handlers, and I'm calling these out specifically because we'll come back to um, uh, how these can be partitioned. But but each class of handlers is independent of the other classes, which allows us to manage them separately. So the scene, is, scene handlers are all unique to a particular data architecture, and those data architectures are independent from, for example, the capability handlers or the inventory handlers. The dispatch layer, there's a single layer which handles all of the incoming uh, requests, unpacks those requests, um, and does the capability validation. And again, because it's really easy, especially in these dynamic systems, to expose too much, um, we wanted to have a single dispatcher that did all of the validation um, uh, on the requests. And so um, everything that comes in has the capability validated in a single location um, and then turns around and hands it off. That gives us a lot of... Um, uh, uh, confidence in our ability to write things that are secure systems and that are not exposing too much inf uh, too much additional information um, on things. In addition, because the the so so there's the um, API level um, securing of invocations. So, for example, you know simulators have a certain set of uh, APIs that they can call users. If you're authenticated as a user, you can manage your, invent your inventory, but you can't update anybody else's and you can't change scenes. Um, so there's a certain level of, of API security that's provided through the dispatch layer and the capability system that we have. In addition, we have all of the sort of stock methods for securing Apache services. Um, so you know, HD access files um, that deny uh, uh, certain IP addresses just works. Um, uh, firewalls and firewall configuration just works in order to be able to access it. And so that gives us at least two different layers of um, uh, maintaining the integrity of the core services that are there. Um, the grid public services, which are really the, the third tier services, include things, and I've mentioned this before, like login, which is the grid and the hypergrid login. Um, and our login service does allow um, a variety of forms of uh, authentication uh, to be provided to it. Um, password based, which is the traditional viewer based. Um, and we also have ways of doing open ID and Facebook ID um, that are actually based on our capability system. So you authenticate, uh, create a capability, and then turn around and, and provide that capability to the viewer. The viewer hands that into the login URI uh, that's given to uh, our login service, and that does the validation of the, of the capability. So. Um, so that allows us to extend um, the kind of core authentication service, which was the motive, the original motivating factor uh, for a lot of what we were doing was to explore that. Um, and then we have the texture offload and the inventory offload that I've that I've already mentioned a couple of times, um, which are really handlers for the basic capabilities um, uh, that the viewer expects uh, a grid to export. Um, and then there's things like the the map server, which handles the grid maps at the at the multiple levels of um, uh, visibility. Um, so then let me let me just give you some of the details here about um, why and how uh, the inventory offload um, works and uh, how the security system um, in Simeon kind of integrates with it. So um, right now. When you log in, 
Uh, the login service creates a session for you on the simulator. The simulator turns around. Uh, the, the viewer then connects to the simulator uh, and attaches itself to that session. Um, the simulator then hands back a set of capabilities, a set of URLs for where the viewer should go for different uh, functions. Um, so uh, one of those that's currently handed back to the simulator um, says, get your textures here. And so it's a URL that the viewer can uh, post requests to uh, that the simulator will handle and respond with um, with textures, um, and that's how the HTTP textures work. Um, similarly, with uh, inventory, there is a URL that's provided to the viewer, and the viewer, when it's doing HTTP-based inventory, posts requests to that URL, and the simulator handles it. And in theory, the simulator is trusted, um, and uh, because of the structure of the URL, there's a um, shared secret, um, which is encoded in the URL, um, that maintains the integrity of the connection between the viewer and the simulator. So you can't have someone coming in and posting requests to your URL um, and uh, uh, accessing your inventory through the front through the simulator. And in theory, that's how it's supposed to work. It's not quite that rope, not quite that secure, but it works. Um, so when we do the inventory offload. The real question is, how do we make sure that the separate service um, also has the same user identity, that it can't be spoofed that way? Um, so the protocol that, that, that we've implemented, we use a similar protocol for the textures as well. Um, the viewer requests the inventory capability in the simulator the way it, the, the way it typically does. The simulator would normally respond with, with uh, a URL that points it that points the viewer to the simulator. In this case, in the Simeon case, the simulator invokes an operation back on the Simeon core services to create a capability. It, it's a security token um, for that particular user, and it registers that with the core services. That security token is then embedded in the URL that's handed back to uh, the viewer. Um, that URL redirects the viewer to the inventory offload server. The viewer provides that um, security token to the inventory offload server. The offload server goes back to the core services and validates that that token, in fact, corresponds to that client IP address. So, um, so we have um, the ability in that way to use this uh, capability system uh, that's in Simeon to store these shared secrets. Um, and pass those secrets back and forth um, in order to get the inventory offload. So um, that's how we ensure that that the inventory um, <clears throat> that that the user who owns the inventory is the only one who's able to access it through this separate offload service. Um, and then the final part that I mentioned, as far as the components, um, are the um, Grid service APIs, um, and I've already mentioned that that we've got client and Perl libraries for it. Um, the PHP library is principally used for the web services that we have. The Perl library is really it, it, it's incredibly convenient uh, for doing um, service management. Um, so, you know, we've we've had discussions in in um, the various lists about how to do. IAR backups, for example, for all of the users on a grid. Um, and what you would need in order to implement IAR sort of out of the box um, is pretty challenging um, right now. So you know, you'd have to pull in essentially a simulator uh, because that's where the APIs are actually implemented for all of the components for it and invoke um, the, the inventory archive function for the collection of users that you have in your system. So um, in order to do that kind of backup, you literally bring up a simulator, write a region module for the simulator and dump all the archives out if that's, if that's the style of backup that you want to do. That's kind of painful. Um, so the the Perl APIs allow us to do um, some very similar kinds of things, but it's but it's essentially all command line driven, and again, it has all the capability access and the other things that um, that make life easy for us um, that way. Um, so administrative functions and functions for managing the grid um, uh, are are relatively straightforward for us to implement in these command line tools and by the way if you feel you know if you really like uh, web front ends for things um, you know the PHP scripts are there that, that allow you to do all those management functions um, 
through the web front end as well. So, all right. Um, so I want to change from a little bit about kind of what Simeon is to how it gets deployed in the grid and 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 a, a little bit about the the kind of scalability aspects of it. Um, so the 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 first assumption is that you know you have Apache installed. That's that's one of the basics and PHP and and all the JSON libraries that are necessary to it. The typical deployment really involves kind of two pieces, um, and these can be you know I have them split out here into two separate kind of services. Um, it's relatively easy to run them on a single server and install everything on a single server. Um, uh, what you really need for, and I say private in the sense that um, it's the set of services that your simulators and public services have to access, but your clients, the viewers, do not have to access, is really just um, the, the set of grid services um, that are available to you. Um, and then you install the public server, which is the grid front end grid public and grid login. Those are the, the three packages um, that are usually installed in a, in a public location. Again, because of, because of the way Apache works, it's relatively easy to install the four high-level directories um, and then drop an HC access file into your grid directory, which limits access just to your, um, uh, uh, to your simulators and... Um, uh, to your existing uh, HTTP server, and that's that's the typical installation that that we're running with Simulin, Simeon is one server, uh, the five basic directories that we have, the 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 library directory and the four service directories, uh, with the grid directory protected by HD access files, uh, limiting access strictly to the simulators, um, and that does give us you know multiple levels of of access um, that we can have. All right, so that's that's the simple one, um, and like I said, that what we're interested in, and one of the things we what what motivated us originally was the identity, um, but a lot of why we have stuck with Simeon is because it does give us well, because it gives us a lot of flexibility of being able to manage uh, manage our grid, um, but also because it gives us the ability to do uh, very scalable deployments. So. Um, because the services and the service installations are all stateless, um, it's relatively straightforward to replicate those in multiple locations. And so, um, you know, if you want scalability in your core services, uh, you simply start up multiple servers on the back end. Um, if you want scalability in the public services, which is actually uh, a thing that we're finding much more uh, relevant here. Um, then you can then you can um, simply make copies of those of the grid public directories. And before we before we leave that, let me let me talk a little bit specifically about that. So we were talking earlier about um, Klaus's talk and some of the struggles that he was having, and um, uh, in one of the staff channels, um, I think Justin mentioned the fact that he's coming in from. Um, uh, Hong Kong, and and that's part of the reason, and and we've got latency issues and other things like that, and and certainly um, for things like um, uh, simulator updates. Um, but if you looked at the rates that that we were seeing for uh, for updates, they were relatively low, on the order of fifteen to twenty kilobits a second uh, coming out of the keynote regions for that. Um, but there's an awful lot of data that has to be transferred, and that data comes in through. Um, uh, for inventory and uh, texture assets and other things like that. Um, the advantage of being able to replicate um, those grid public directories is that, in a sense, you can create a content distribution network using those um, public services. So, um, for example, the texture offload does caching of the actual texture data. Um, so it'd be relatively straightforward to create a grid public directory uh, installation in Asia. Um, and that would mean that you're transferring textures, the long haul, back to uh, 
um, uh, Irvine in order to grab those textures off the, the UCI server that, that's hosting uh, the conference. You only have to do it one time. Everything else is doing a local pull on it. And so you get all of the advantages, uh, performance advantages of content distribution networks. And all you really have to do is just install an Apache server and one package on top of it. Um, and the rest of it is is handled by the statelessness of the interactions between the public services um, uh, and the core services. So we r we rarely see need for replication of the core services. There are some times, but we rarely see need for the replication of the core services. What we see a lot of use in is replication of those public services in order to give us that geographical distribution, um, in order to make the, the sort of high bandwidth interactions as short as possible, not use as uh, not use the the internet connections with the internet latencies issues that are there. So the the real win in having these things as web services is um, that flexibility for the deployment. Right is is a big thing um, that allows us to do these local accesses to things. But we've said several times that we we just get all of the work that everyone has done on making web access fast and robust and reliable um, and responsive. Um, and we get it for free. Um, the, the Apache server performance-wise versus using a simulator, the HTTP server in the simulator, is a huge win for us. Um, uh, Dali, ask me that again at, at the end, um, and I'll respond to it. Um, but we get a huge win out of out of just using Apache, which has been heavily optimized uh, for accesses, and it does one thing: it serves web pages, and it serves them extremely well. Um, but not only that, we get all of these technologies on the top for doing uh, replication and load balancing. Um, so we know how to do round robin DNS; it just works. Um, we know how to do uh, load balancing across multiple web servers. And, you know, you can go out and grab a number of packages um, uh, that'll provide off-the-shelf load balancing and sprayer technology for um, uh, for the requests that are coming in. Um, all of that stuff is sort of known technology. It's relatively easy to just drop it in, um, and it works. So um, that's really the win here um, with with the the web service based approach is. We leverage all of this uh, web technology that is extremely mature in doing the performance optimizations on it. Um, so the other thing, and I mentioned this a little bit in the hypergrid panel the other day that I wanted to bring back, was just the, the other approach to doing the um, uh, um, kind of scalability, which is to, to start partitioning the services off themselves. Um, and that's really disarticulating the, the service. And so we've got the basic service has all of these pieces in it. Um, there's no particular reason why we have to stick to that. Um, the services, again, because they're independent of one another, um, uh, can be partitioned out in whatever way that we want. And, and the really nice thing about that is, is that we can then put them back together um, in different ways. And so, for example, um, we can have user capability, inventory, identity, and asset store in one service. And then everything that's actually responsible for uh, scene management in a separate service. Um, and there's no particular reason why two or three independent scene services can't exist. And so you can have a single set of user services um, that are supporting multiple maps. Um, which allows you to have um, you know, multiple independent grids, each one of which can be managed by itself without having all of the management of the overhead of, of dealing with users and communities and, and all of the other pieces that go along with that. So there's a set of core services that we can, that we can pull out and compose then into, uh, into the grid services that we want. So it allows us a lot of flexibility for um, building fairly central um, large uh, populations of users and assets and inventories and still have very small independent isolated uh, grids that are leveraging that. So um, just for summary then, um, uh, 
go down at the bottom. Yeah. Um, Simeon's a set of web services. It's a replacement for the open some robust services. Um, it's a bit of a challenge to install uh, and get configured correctly. Um, uh, well, if you've dealt with the simulator configuration files, um, maybe it's not quite so hard, um, relatively speaking. Um, but it does take a little bit of work to get it right. Um, the architecture has several advantages. Um, we use very mature web technologies in order to build it. And as a result, we can leverage all of the performance and reliability techniques that we get from that. The three-tier architecture really makes it a lot easier um, to add um, uh, um, new services uh, to update running systems. The development process is much easier. The deployment process is much easier. Um, and there are real APIs that are encapsulated in sets of libraries that, that applications can take advantage of. Um, the one thing I will point out is the capability model right now is, as, is every bit as expressive as what exists um, between simulators and the robust servers, and in fact, it's it's already more than that. Um, but there's a lot of work that we're doing in order to provide us with fine-grained, much more fine-grained control, um, which would allow us to have different kinds of relationships between um, uh, um, applications and the core services, uh, which would allow us a lot more expressiveness, for example, in what can be exposed in uh, our hypergrid interaction. So rather than having one suitcase folder, we have the ability to say, I trust that grid over there. Um, I'm going to expose more, but I don't trust those guys over there, so we're going to expose less. And the capabilities that we can encode in the service URLs that we provide to each of those grids um, gives us that expressiveness. Um, and that's that's really the the kind of work that that we're doing right now on it. Um, so just to conclude, then, um, you know, the project has been hosted by the Open Metaverse Foundation for a number of years. Um, although the development directory that most of our work is currently being done on and has not been pushed back up to OMV or uh, OMF um, is is on GitHub, and you're more than welcome uh, to grab the code uh, out of there. All right, that's all. Questions? Okay, Dali, going back to uh, the self-replicating key value store packages, um, if you look at, uh, you know, what is MongoDB? I mean, that's more or less what it is, um, is a structured document store. Um, Mongo does provide some ability to do replication. Uh, what we have found is if you're doing local database replication, um, that's what they're really designed for and work well at. If you're doing long range, so if you're doing geographical distribution, um, database uh, replication doesn't work, excuse me, doesn't work quite as well. Um, the content distribution approaches seem to work much, much better um, in those approaches. So that's where we're going with that. All right, any other questions? Okay, Dan tells me I'm out of time. Um, uh, I'll be around. Um, if you'd like to chat later, uh, please get a hold of me. Thanks. Thank you, Mick Bowman, for a terrific presentation. As a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. In this room, the next session will be viewers and Open Simulator panel with Justin Clark Casey. Thank you again to our speaker and the audience. We'll be, re we'll be back shortly with the next session. Thanks. <laughs>